Hi everyone, this is Sarah from smallbusinesssarah.com and today I'm going to show you how to customize your chart of accounts within QuickBooks. So to begin, we're gonna come up here to the gear icon and go to chart of accounts to bring up a fresh chart of, chart of accounts. Now, why are we customizing our chart of accounts? Well, the whole reason we do bookkeeping and for our business is so that we can see our financial data and make good business decisions based upon that data. So the easier our reports are to read, the more easily we can make decisions and make good business decisions. So by customizing your chart of accounts, your reports are gonna look exactly the way you want them to look, and they're going to allow you to read them more easily. Now this is especially useful for business owners who have multiple branches, we'll say, to their business. I personally am involved with several different things. I have a website, smallbusinesssarah.com. I have an Etsy shop, The Amateur Naturalist, and I'm actually thinking of opening a vintage Etsy shop. I just came up with that thought this morning. I write eBooks that you can find on Amazon, and I have three of those self-published eBooks written on business topics. And I, I want to know which areas of my business are making money, which are not. I want to see all the different ways that those businesses are making money. I want to see more detail on what kind of expenses those branches of my business have. So that's where customizing my chart of accounts is going to group like income and like expenses together so that I can see it broken out that way on my profit and loss statement. Okay, so let's begin. This is a completely fresh chart of accounts. And let's begin by getting rid of things that we don't want. So, okay, I'm just gonna randomly find some stuff. Job supplies. I, I probably won't use job supplies ever. So I'm gonna come over here, I clicked that arrow, and I'm gonna click delete. Are you sure you wanna delete this? Yes. Okay, so that gets rid of, so we can kind of clean up our chart of accounts. Um, let me see what else. Rent and lease. I'm not gonna be renting or leasing anything. I'm gonna delete that. Billable expense income. All right, I, that sounds a bit more than what I need. I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so things like that, that you just know, like you're not gonna use. Uh, utilities, I don't have a separate building for my business. I'm gonna delete that. And don't worry, you can bring all of this stuff back later if you want it, that's fine. Right now I don't need insurance for my business. I'm gonna delete that. Don't be afraid to do this. You can always bring it back. And the less you have on your chart of accounts, it kind of makes it easier to scroll, scroll through and find what you are looking for when you're adding things, um, when you're coding your transactions. Okay. All right, let's, let's leave it at that. There may be more that I delete later. Now, let's start creating my own accounts. Let's start with some revenue. So the category type we're gonna pick for our revenue is an income. This detail type is not overly important. Um, I'm gonna call it um, other primary income because the first thing that I'm going to include here is website income. So it's uh, not, not sales of product, which would be right here. I'm gonna just do other primary. Okay, so I'm gonna just hit save and close. So I've got website income now. You can see that right there. 
And that's really my main category, but I want to actually, so that it shows up nice and stacked kind of on my income statement, I like to make subcategories. So once again, we're going to do new. We're going to do income. We're going to do other primary income. And we're going to call this website affiliate income. So that's one way that I make money from my website. And it is a sub account of the website income account I just created. Because the website income account, the main category, I don't put any transactions in that. It's kind of a placeholder. See how we've got website income here. Website affiliate income is a sub account of it. So this becomes a placeholder. I don't actually put any of my income transactions into that account. Um, so another type of income that I could have on my website, or if you have a blog, you could call it your blog. I prefer to call mine my website because I don't really talk about my personal life on it. So website advertising income. And this is a sub account also of website income. Okay, now let's do some expenses for the website. So we'll do new once again. This time we're doing an expense. So income is there, expenses is there. Okay, so the detail type for expenses, they have a lot of things listed. Oftentimes I end up picking things like office and general administrative because sometimes the type of expenses that you have in your business don't like neatly fit into one of these categories. So now we're gonna create our main head, head category here. We're gonna call it our website expenses. That's our main category. And actually, instead of save and close, we're gonna do save and new. That'll save us a step, okay? So we're back to this screen without having to get out. So now let's create some of our subcategories for that main um, website expenses category. I'll just pick that again. So let's see. I actually pay for graphic design services. Web graphic design. Like my Pinterest images, things like that. I'm not that great at it. My logo. So website graphic design is going to be a sub account of website expenses. And let's create one more. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to stay in there. Uh, once again, we're going to do another expense. We'll do office and general administrative. And we'll call this one website tools and services. So kind of monthly fee things that I pay for, like board booster or things of that nature that help me to run my business, but are little online tools that I use. Okay, once again, that was a sub account of website expenses. So here we go, we've got website expenses, a, a main category set up, and two subcategories, and the two subcategories is where we will track those expenses. And we can create as many as we want. Now, let's do a little bit more. We're gonna do for my Etsy account. We're gonna do an Etsy income, and Etsy expenses. I'll probably just do one of each this time. So this is sales of product income. I'll call this Etsy sales. Now if I start a second shop, I could call it 
Etsy vintage sales and call this one Etsy amateur naturalist sales. We'll do save and new to keep it rolling. So that's our main one that we're not going to actually put any transactions in. Now we're going to come here again, income, sales of product. We'll do, I normally call this like Etsy sales or Etsy income, anything like that. It's a sub account. So it has the same name, Etsy sales, Etsy sales. But one is the upper level that I'm not going to use and the other one's the sub account that I am going to use. Now with my Etsy shop, I also break out what portion and in a previous video I, I did this, I showed you how to do it, how you break out your deposits, the shipping portion of it. So we're going to, because we want to know how much are we getting in that's actually shipping, not actually from the product that we're selling. So it's a sub account of that. Save and new. We'll keep going. And we'll do expenses, and I'll show you how that looks. Expenses. This is for the Etsy shop. Um, yeah, I normally just... I don't worry too much about the detail. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call this, we've got, oh, actually, I need to make my main account first, don't I? Etsy expenses is not a sub account yet. Do an expense again. Almost done here. Fast forward if you would like. Okay, now we'll do Etsy transaction fees is one type of fee. Sub account of Etsy expenses. We'll do one more to show you. This is an expense. office, we'll call it Etsy shipping fees. So like what I pay to ship products. And I have more. I have several uh, categories. I have another whole grouping for book, for my book business. Okay, so now we'll finally save and close. Okay, so right, exactly how you see this here is how you're going to see it on your profit and loss statement. I can't show you the profit and loss statement because I have zero transactions in here and my profit and loss statement will just be a big blank. It doesn't show you like a, an outline of all of this. But when you run your profit and loss report, now look. At the top, I'm going to have my Etsy sales and I'm going to have that broken into, is it like the product or is it the shipping income? I'm going to have the website broken out. Was it from advertising or was it from affiliate income? Which one is doing better for my website? Then I'll come down to my expense section on my profit and loss. I won't put anything in this main category. I'll go to the subcategory when I'm coding and previous videos show you how to do coding. And I can break out the shipping fees. I can break out transaction fees here from my Etsy shop expenses. If I do advertising, I'll, I'll make a category for that, a subcategory. If I do, when I buy my shipping supplies, that's going to be under my Etsy expenses too. Whatever helps me to understand how I'm spending my money and how I'm making my money. That's the whole point. You need to understand where your money is coming from, where your money is going to. My website, big expense is the graphic design, tools and services. I'll probably go ahead and add another one that will be like my hosting and just general website expenses, hosting, um, reserving my name. There's the yearly fee for that, for reserving your domain name. So I'll add a couple more under here. But then when I look at my financial statements, I'll know what the website expenses were 
it won't all just be put in under office supplies and software. And I will know what my Etsy expenses were. It'll be broken out and easy for me to see. If I open another Etsy shop, I can tell which shop is making money, which shop isn't, things like that. I'm gonna probably go in here later and add book income and then book production expenses. So as you can see, it's so easy to customize your chart of accounts. Many people are afraid to do this step, but I know you can do it. If you have questions about setting up your business, if you need help from an accountant at all, I, I do provide services that can just get you started on the right foot, or I can provide full bookkeeping services. So you can find that information at smallbusinesssarah.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or leave a comment down below with a question and I will do my best to answer it. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day.